let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody, coast to coast, This Week in America. Besides being a published author, Christine Rita of Holmes, New York, is a wife, mother of three sons, grandmother of three, Alex, Ariel, and Zane. She enjoys her family and all of the quality time they have together. Her grandchildren constantly keep her busy and make her feel blessed and complete. In her free time, she works with various clients to teach them about skin care, makeup, and to feel good about themselves. Christine is the author of two highly praised books, the delightful children's book, Zane Visiting the Dentist. The book follows her grandson, Zane, on his appointment with the dentist, filled with colorful illustrations and realistic storytelling. Her other book, Try Being in Our Shoes, is a memoir, an inspirational and unique story about the seemingly roller coaster ride of Christine's life journey. She details some of the most important events of her life, chronicling her growing up years. A few topics she touches upon are the relationships with her siblings and parents, a tragic car accident, her marriage, becoming a mother and her uh, grandmother as well, and the horrific burning of her home. Zane Visiting the Dentist and Try Being in Our Shoes, both books earned the recommended award from Workbook Press Literary Book Competition 2020, and author Christine Rita, our guest on This Week in America. Christine, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. It's great to be here. You've done such a wonderful job with both of these books, and we'll talk about both in detail, give you information on Christine's website and where the book's available. Let's start with a date that was very important to you in the telling of the book, Try Being in Our Shoes. What comes to mind when you hear the date, January 28th, 2008? What do you think of when you hear that date? I think of my life turning around and trying to put pieces back together with my family and going forward with the tragedy of the fire due to that was leaving a, my house and being displaced. Yeah, that was the fire that I talked about that you, you mentioned, you talk about in the book, Try Being in Our Shoes. Talk about the devastation of that. It was what, an electrical house fire, but everybody got out safe. Thank God, yes, everyone was safe. That's how we got through the four and a half years of being out of the house while they were building the house and insurance and all that stuff that needs to be taken care of before you can get into a house. Yeah, and it's almost like, I would assume, a, a sort of a never-ending nightmare. You get through, you realize how fortunate you are that everybody is out safe, but then you deal with real-life problems. How difficult was that period for you and members of the family to get through this? Because it's sort of like every day is a different challenge, isn't it, during this period? 100%. I have three sons, and um, luckily my son and his wife and... Uh, my grandson at the time, we only had one. They were living under my roof, and they were out already, so we didn't have to worry about them. They were on their own in their own home. And my middle son and uh, youngest was uh, still living with us, and we had to worry about where they were going to have a roof over their house because we still had to have somewhere to live, and they were still going to school. So it was very, very, very very, very difficult to, um, to juggle children and trying to live. And yet you did all of that and kept up hope, kept up uh, sort of the, the inspiration for other members of your family, and you're sharing that inspiration now. That particular book is Try Being in Our Shoes, Christine Rita, that's R-E-D, R-E-D-A-A, D-A, R-E-D-A, book available on our website, Christine Rita, R-E-D-A dot com. Amazon, the usual places, you can link out by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. I mentioned the other book, the children's book that we'll talk about in a second. What was the inspiration for writing your books? In particular, the first book, Try Being in Our Shoes. Why did you want to share this story? How did you feel this would help others? Well, I was very depressed, and then I needed to change that because 
we were all alive. We were still working. We were still able to do what we needed to do. And I, I, there, there was hope and faith I had. So I wanted to write it so I could digest what was happening to me and how really lucky, lucky we were. And we are to um, be able to tell the story. Yes. And and other people, you know, even if it even if it helped one person, I would feel good that I helped someone get through a tragedy that they would have in their life. And by telling the story, it sounds like this really helped you as well, didn't it? One hundred percent. Yes, it did. Because sometimes when you're living it, and then when you're writing it down. It just kind of clicks, and then you get strong from it, you know? You're reading about yourself. Yes, and as others read, they go, well, Christine was going through the same emotions that I'm going through. She made it. I can make it, too. So this book is, is so inspirational. Reading the reviews, that's the message that, that resonates with, with so many of the readers. Well, let's talk about inspiration for the children's book, which I love. Zane visiting the dentist. This could be used for adults as well to get us over that fear of going to the dentist because <laughs> we all have that no matter what the age is. Where did the inspiration come from uh, uh, to come up with the idea of Zane visiting the dentist using your grandson? And this was sort of a message to him that wasn't it yes um he was my first grandson after quite a few years because i have um two older grandchildren so when the zane came along it, we were back to children so um the other kids were teenagers so i decided we were i was watching him every day pretty much and um his gums he was teething and his gums were hurting and we were massaging his teeth and and his gums and and i decided he shouldn't be, when he goes to the dentist he shouldn't be scared it should be a learning process where everything goes and why is he going and how to floss and and i think all children should feel that way not everybody is scared but there's a quite a few people and kids that are scared. So just to make light of it, that um, they should know and be have a tour around the dentist so he's, they're more comfortable. And it really does prepare the child for what they're going to see. I mean, you go to the dentist, even as an adult, you're intimidated by all the shiny objects they have there. They're going to poke and stick in your mouth and all these things <laughs> they're going to do. If you somehow yes. have some idea, especially as a child. In fact, had I read this as a child, I'd probably be a lot better now because you sort of take us by the hand and walk us through this process. It's going to be okay. In fact, it's going to be better than okay. You're going to be a better person when you come out of here because your, your oral health is, <laughs> is going to be taken care of. That book is Zane Visiting the Dentist. Beautifully illustrated. Talk about the illustrations because they jump right off the page at you. A, a great job with the illustrations as well. Yes, I thought so too. And um, I got a lot of feedback that people um, enjoyed reading the book to the children and also... They can read them the shows that it's, you know, whatever age they can read, four, four or five, five or six, or whatever age they yes. can, you know, start reading. Yeah, it's a good opportunity to read to the child, have the child read to the parent or the grandparent or go back and forth and uh, and get into a discussion of, of going to the dentist. That's the, yeah. the second book we're talking about, Zane Visiting the Dentist. Both books available, of course, at uh, Amazon, the usual places. Christine's website is ChristineReda, R-E-D-A dot com. Uh, the book is published by Workbook Press. Their website is WorkbookPress.com. In, in your book, uh, the first book you wrote, Try Being in Our, Our Shoes, you talk about your, your upbringing, where you came from. Talk a little bit about what was your childhood like? My childhood was very nice and, and uh, comfortable. I um, had three other older sisters and a brother, and um, I was the fourth, second to the uh, youngest. And uh, my mother and father... My mother was a stay-home mom, and my father worked very hard and diligently at the, the uh, luncheonette that she, he owned. And we had a really um, comfortable but yet hard, you know, um, bringing up because oh, yes. um, there were so many children that there was only one 
uh, one person working and you know how that is a lot of children and uh, you need a lot of money. <laughs> well, exactly. I think most of us can relate to growing up in a, in a situation like that, especially in that era where you usually had one income and that had to su- supply everybody, you had to clothe them, feed them, uh, educate them, transport them, all of that. And you, you talk about that in the book and you, you talk about the ups and the downs. When you hit that down period, what do you, what do you do? How do you handle pain or problems that you, you come across, came across in your life? Well, hmm. I didn't handle them that great. At the time, I was uh, young, and my hus- my father passed away, and I would go and hang out with the wrong type of people, so to speak. Yes. And uh, and then, but I was I was um, wheeled back in, and uh, I winded up being oh you know good and uh, understanding where I went wrong and. Uh, my mother was always there. My, my family were always there for me, bad or good or indifferent. Yeah, and I understand when sometimes things are difficult, there's always something comforting about being near the water. When you had a boat and would just sort of go and, uh, and enjoy the peaceful surroundings and pull yourself back together. Yes, I did that. But that was later on in life when we had the boat. When um, we lost our house, we decided... We were going from apartment, hotels, we were all over the place. So we decided to get an old yacht that was not that much money. And we put it on the Hudson River and we stayed there. And just saying, helped us get through the rough times waiting for the house to be built and all the rigmarole that we needed to go through. And uh, a little enjoyment while we were suffering. And the kids enjoyed fishing in the mountains looking at the mountains and yes that was very very surreal with us on the program is christine reda that's r-e-d-a the book is uh called what's the two books try being in our shoes and then zane visiting the dentist talk about this writing when did you start writing these books and where did this this come from it wasn't the background that got you to uh interested in writing let's start with when did you start writing the books Around 2014, a few years back, what happened was um, I worked all my life, and um, then I um, got a little sick, and I wasn't able to work. So I just I was home all the time, and after a while, it kind of gets depressing, not doing anything. So uh, I just got a piece of paper and a pen, and I started writing, and I kept myself very, very busy writing different stories and and then I decided to write these two books, Try Being in Our Shoes and Being Busy with Dentists. And, um, and that's how it started. You know, that's amazing. And I'm always interested in the writing procedures, the techniques. Everybody does it a little bit differently. Do you, how many hours a day do you write? Do you set aside time every day to write? Yes, I do. But uh, mostly when it's like a really rainy day or a snowy day and we're stuck in, I do a lot of writing then because every day, you know, what you have to do every day, sometimes you don't have hours of doing that. Yes. You you know, you're day and you want to go to bed or take a shower, whatever you got to do and eat. But, um, I, at least, at least an hour a day, I put my thoughts on paper for sure. Is there a, a favorite book or a favorite author that maybe influenced you that you really enjoy reading? Well, it's an old time Daniel Steele. <laughs> oh, you can't go wrong with that, can you? Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. So it's always fun when uh, you get one of those books and, and you can sort of lose yourself in, uh, in doing that. Uh, but Christine Rita, our guest on the program, we're talking about her two books, Zane Visiting the Dentist, a delightful children's book, and a memoir, Try Being in Our Shoes, Let's talk a little bit about, again, let's go back to try being in our shoes because your life experiences really reflect what so many people go through. What, in your mind, was the most unforgettable experience that, that you had to deal with and may still be dealing with it to this, to this day? When my son passed away. Boy, and I, I don't know how you, how you ever deal with something like that. And I know that... Um, We'll talk about that here in a second. That had to be a difficult time 
to go through and to continue to go through and with so many family members. Uh, the book is Try Being in Our Shoes, and Christine is very open about what she's gone through, the ups and downs of of all of the, the things that she's gone through in her life, the good as well as the bad. So many people find what you do inspiring by leading them. Even the book saying visiting the dentist is inspirational because it's going to eliminate that, that fear that kids have and consequently parents have of taking their child to the dentist. What are some of the things that you find inspiring? Um, let me understand the question about the book or just in life in general. Well, it, it, inspirational, I'm, I'm thinking, what what in general in your life inspires you? Not just a, another book, but what things do you like to do that to sort of motivate you and, and inspire you? Oh, oh that's easy. Um, staying and watching my grandkids, picking up my older granddaughter from oh, yes. her sports and school, and watching their football games and soccer and all lacrosse that's my whole world my grandkids and of course my family yeah and that's uh, that's obvious in in the writings and how you've you've talked about the fi- the family during the course of the interview with uh, but time is going by so quickly the two books available and i'll give you all this again at the end of the program but zane visiting the dentist and then the memoir by christine try being in our shoes christine rita that's r e d a, the book is available at uh, Amazon, the usual places. ChristineRita.com is our website. All of this is on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You can go there and uh, link on directly to get uh, information on Christine and the books. Uh, you mentioned writer, uh, being a writer, and you're a very, very talented writer. Uh, what would you give up to, to become a better writer? Is that a goal that you have? Um, what would I give up? Yeah, what is like, the one thing that that uh, that maybe holds you back, or maybe you give a little bit too much thought to as as you're writing? Oh yeah, um, I'm always wondering if what people think of what I say or what I write, or if I'm doing it right or doing oh, it yes. wrong. Just to stop. <laughs> that yes. And I think you've proven if you do what you feel instinctively is the story you want to tell and how you want to tell it, you can be very successful doing that. The problem, I guess, if you ask five people, you get five different opinions and then you're totally lost as to what to do. So, <laughs> so yes. So, yes. so trust. I'm worse off than what I thought. Well, yeah, then you totally, and then everything you write in the future is in pencil so you can erase it when somebody doesn't like it. So you're better off just to do what uh, Christine feels is the way to do it and go ahead and uh, and finish it that way. We've got a couple minutes left in the program, and I want to go back and, and talk about, uh, ask you if there's something you want to share. We touched on this briefly a few, a few moments ago. It's something that came about after, the, uh, after you published Try Being in Our Shoes. Is there something special you would like to share uh, uh, from the book? Uh, to the readers? Yes, yes. I would like to. Um, after republishing my book, Try Being in Our Shoes, an unexpected loss happened in my life. My eldest son, Alex, had passed away. She left behind a wife and two children. I was in total shock for a very long time and still are. Try be strong for his wife, my two grandkids, and the whole family. The struggles go on every day. I do get up every morning. I do the best that I can. Their children are 17 and 14 now and reminds me of when my father passed away. I was my granddaughter's age. There are other family mentions in this book that have passed away. My mom, which every day I try calling her, and it saddens me, especially around the holidays, when I'm trying to cook I want her advice because she was yes. the best cook in my eyes. My mother-in-law lived a long life to her 90s, sadly left us this year. Rest in peace. It's, be, it's, been, um, it's been a while since my sister Fran left us, but it seems like yesterday. My son, Anthony's dog, Ryder, who was a big part of my life, had to be put down. I still feel his loss. Yes. I feel the energy to give me the strength to get through each day. I hope when you read this book, 
you will get some things out of this short, easy read book to help you get through your darkest moments. On a positive note, my son Philip and his wife Megan had a son named Zane, and they are expecting in January, passed already, she's already uh, four months, a little girl, Alexia Rose Rita. My youngest son, Anthony, married a beautiful young lady, London, which they just had active smiley baby boy, Axel Walker Rita. Fantastic. I am truly blessed. Remember, there will be sunshine with a rainbow. So keep the faith and stay positive. Things will get better if you have that mindset. That's how I live every day. And I hope you enjoy my book. God bless you all. And that's what makes Christine's book so real, because you share all of the thoughts there and you go through all of the losses and then you you balance with what's positive in your life and you you understand how you are concerned about yourself and getting through, but being there for the other family members and the thought it brings back when, when your father passed away. These are thoughts, emotions that, uh, that so many people go through. And that's why your book is, is doing so well. It's so inspirational and, and telling your story and it's, it's okay to grieve. And then you need to go forward. Both of these books, both, as I mentioned, receiving the recommended award from the Workbook Press Literary Book Competition of 2020, Zane Visiting the Dentist, and Try Being in Our Shoes. The author is our guest on the program, Christine Rita, R-E-D-A is, uh, is the spelling, and her website is christinerita.com. A book available at Amazon, all of the usual places, and you'll find a link onto, uh, onto those locations by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Try Being in Our Shoes is, is an easy read, an inspirational read, and Zane Visiting the Dentist is a must for every uh, household that's got uh, young children there. It's, uh, it's something that uh, the child will enjoy and benefit from. Christine, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. What are you working on now? Do you have another book you're working on? No, I'm uh, I'm brewing. It's brewing. I'm not sure yet, but it's coming along. Okay. Well, hopefully, uh, we'll have a chance to talk about that as well. Just to write it yourself, whatever you feel good about. Don't ask anybody. Just write what Christine <laughs> wants to write about. It'll be fine. The two books are both, uh, uh, again, books that are doing so well, and you'll find out why if you read either of these or both. Same visiting the dentist and try being in our shoes. Christine, a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you for being with us. Uh, good luck on these two books. They're doing exceptionally well, and hopefully we'll have a chance to, uh, to talk again. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me and giving me the opportunity to share. Maybe one day you'll be able to, um, we could do it in person. We'd love to be able to do that. If you still have the app, we'll go out on the water. I always feel better on the water, so we can go do that and, uh, and chat <laughs> okay. out there. Look at the water and the mountains out there. I'm, I'm all for that. Christine Rita, <laughs> our guest on the program, R-E-D-A. All the information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.